Hello and welcome to our next reflection on the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Yesterday we finished this section of the Creed referring to God the Father. And today we move on to the next part of the Creed, uh, talking about our belief in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. And so the focus on the person of Jesus. Who is He? Well, from the scriptures we know that he was a historical figure. He came, he was sent by God. He became a human being. The eternal word of God became flesh and dwelt among us in a specific time and moment in history. The moment chosen by God as the right time to come to us. And so we believe in Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus who was born in Bethlehem under the time of King Herod the Great, under the time of the Emperor Caesar Augustus. We believe that he lived, he was a son of a carpenter, that was his trade. Uh, we believe that he was crucified under the time of Pontius Pilate. And so there is a number of historical facts uh, that we can use to place Jesus in a given time of our human history. And we proclaim him. This is our mission. We know why he came. We know what he accomplished. Uh, we have received grace upon grace from him. And so filled with his love, filled with his spirit, we wish to pass on the knowledge about him to all other people. And so Jesus, the person of Jesus, uh, is at the heart of catechesis is at the heart of our faith. We are passing on our knowledge of a living being. Uh, and so Jesus is at the heart of our message. This was the mission given to the apostles, given to his disciples, to proclaim him to all nations. Uh, the catechism uh, reminds us of something very important. Uh, and I'll read this quote to you from the Catechism. In Catechesis, Christ, the incarnate Word and the Son of God, is taught. Everything else is taught with reference to him. And it is Christ alone who teaches. Anyone else teaches to the extent that he is Christ's spokesman, enabling Christ to teach with his lips. Uh, whether it is a he or a she makes no difference. Uh, what we are called to do uh, is to become aware that my teaching, my speaking to you right now, is not simply my teaching. Uh, it is the knowledge, it is the teaching of God himself, of Christ himself. And so the duty of anyone who wishes to proclaim Christ to realize and to remember what we said earlier, that this faith, this knowledge, isn't something I have just personally dreamt up uh, or received in a revelation yesterday. This is something I have received from the Church. And so I need to be filled with a desire to come to know God, to come to know this faith, in order to be able to teach it to others. In order for those words in the Catechism to become true, that those who listen to me are not simply listening to me for my sake. I am not here as a parish priest to draw you to listen to me. If I were to draw you towards me, I would have failed in my mission. My mission, the mission of anyone who teaches Christ to others, is to be the mission of John the Baptist, pointing out the Lamb of God, pointing towards Jesus. And so, please God, you are not attracted to me. Please God, you are attracted to the person of Jesus. Uh, please God, you don't pay attention whether I use nice words or the wrong words or this you might not like about the message or whatever. Remember, it's not my message. I'm here to pass on the message of Christ and his teaching to you. Uh, and it's great, a freeing experience for all of us. 
because how that message is received, as the Catechism reminds us, uh, we, anyone who wishes to teach Christ, needs to come to know him. And once we come to know him, is to also share in his sufferings, to share in his experience, his experience that we have celebrated just over a week ago, uh, the passion, the suffering, the rejection, the scorn, uh, people turning away, people not wanting to listen to the message, people who feel that the message is uncomfortable. If you experience any of these things, thank God for it. Because the message is not here to make us comfortable. The message of Christ is here to bring us eternal life. And it does so by helping us enter into the mystery of his suffering, death and resurrection. And so we, are, we have this mission because we are all meant to be catechists. We are all meant to be doing this in our homes. Uh, we are the first teachers of the faith to our children. Uh, we are the first teachers of our faith to those we live with. Uh, if we don't talk about the message of Christ, if we don't take enough trouble to read up about the message of Christ, uh, then we will never come to know him. And we will never experience what he wishes us to experience. So it's very important uh, for us to take this mis mission uh, seriously but to be free in the fact that this is something we have received from the Church. It's not our own. It's not my own. And so, the person of Jesus, his name, the very name says, it is the God who saves. His mission is also his identity. He is coming to us as the one who saves us from our sins. That's his mission. Uh, Jesus is the one who saves. That name is holy, that name of the Saviour God who saves us from our sins. Uh, for the Jewish people is only pronounced once a year in atonement for the sins of the people of Israel. Only once a year the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies, into the presence of God and invoke this name. In this name our sins are forgiven. In this name every knee has to bow in heaven and on earth. It is through this name of Jesus that we make all our prayers. It is through this name, as Jesus promises us, and you, the Father will grant you anything you ask for in my name. And so the power of invoking the name of Jesus and the power of praying uh, the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. A beautiful prayer in our Christian tradition that we can make our own on a daily basis as we go through the day. Calling on the Son of God, on the one who has power to save me from my sin. So often we refer to the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's not his surname, as is commonly uh, thought of at times. We use it so often uh, as though it is just an added, uh, added surname to Jesus. Uh, but Christ means the Anointed One, the Consecrated One, the Messiah, uh, the One who perfectly fulfills that mission, uh, his mission of being a prophet, a priest, and a king. We share in that mission uh, when, we, during the moment of our baptism. We will talk about it later when we talk about this great sacrament. Uh, but Christ has this mission. He is anointed by the Holy Spirit uh, to fulfill the mission of saving us and revealing uh, God the Father to us. The only Son of God. In the Old Testament, as the Catechism reminds us, the title Son of God is applied to many people. 
The sons of God are the angels. The sons of God might be the kings, the chosen people. And so it doesn't necessarily mean uh, in the way that we apply it to Jesus as the only son of God. Uh, but we also know from the New Testament that when Peter makes his profession of faith, you are the son of the living God. Jesus remarks that this is not something that has been revealed to you by another human being. So there is something about Peter's understanding that Jesus is unique. Jesus is not like you and me. Jesus is the eternal Son of God, the only Son of God, in a way that you and me are not, because we are God's creatures. Whereas this is who God is, within his own being. That revelation is revealed to us at the moment of baptism and at the moment of the transfiguration, where the voice of God the Father is heard, this is my beloved Son. He is the one. There is no other. And the Catechism reminds us also that Jesus always refers to his Father and our Father. He is making a distinction between his own unique relationship of a son to a father and our own unique relationship as sons, as creatures of the same father. He is only teaching us to pray our father, but he is teaching us about his father and our father. And the title Lord uh, Lord, that ref refers in the New Testament uh, to the divine name. Uh, and so, the unique uh, understanding of Jesus uh, is that he ascribes this title, this divine name, uh, to himself. And so, from the very beginning, uh, the power, the honor, the glory that is due to God the Father uh, is also due to his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. He is also Lord. He is also the center of our life, the center of our history, the focal point. He is the one through whom we make all our prayers, because he is the way to the Father. So the centrality of the person of Jesus uh, is inviting us to come to know him, to spend our lives seeking to know him, to discover him more, to make him the real centre of our daily life, and to use everything around us to grow in our knowledge and love of the person of Jesus. And maybe during today, let's make that Jesus prayer our prayer for today. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. God bless you.